A very good evening and welcome to the news tonight. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting you the top stories from India and across the world starting with the headlines. Rajya Sabha passes the Enemy Property Amendment and Validation Bill 2016. Opposition parties stage a walkout claiming that the bill was being, pays, uh, being passed in haste. Supreme Court issues a warrant against Calcutta High Court Judge Justice C.S. Karnan for failing to appear in a contempt case. Court directs the West Bengal DGP to ensure his appearance on the 31st of March. The Constitutional Court upholds parliamentary vote to impeach South Korean President Park Yun-hai. 60 days are left to elect a new leader. The Rajya Sabha passed the Enemy Property Amendment and Validation Bill 2016 on Friday. The opposition, however, raised objections that the bill was being passed in haste and staged a walkout. Explaining the background and the need for urgency to pass the bill, Leader of the House Arun Jaitley said that the bill is closely linked to national security. With no member present in the opposition benches, the statutory resolution was negated and the bill was passed in the upper house. The object is that the enemy must not hold property in my territory. You never enrich the enemy. You always weaken the enemy when you are at war with the enemy. Whatever political signals people want to send, this is a security issue. It's an issue of principle. The rationale behind the principle legislation of 1968 is that you don't allow property or commercial interest of the enemy in India. And an enemy is a person with whom India has gone on to war. And on the date of the war, if he was a citizen of an enemy, he loses his property. Forever. By this forever, forever. This is the law all over the world. So let us not create only for vote bank politics an exception where enemies by this process, in, enemies in law, can then get to acquire properties in India. Now the recent incidents of protests and violence in Delhi University and other central varsities came up for discussion in the upper house on Friday. Members from the left parties termed it a dangerous trend and an attack on the freedom of expression. Members of left parties raised the issue of protests in Delhi University in the upper house on Friday. Raising the issue during zero hour, CPI MP D. Raja termed it as an attack on the freedom of expression. CPI MP Sitaram Yachuri also supported Raja saying such incidents should not be allowed to take place on university campuses. There is an increasing attack on no academic matter. freedom, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of creation. Sir, there is growing tension, there is growing tension in all our campuses. JNU is tense and students are fighting against new admission policy that is being introduced in JNU. It will definitely adversely impact the entry of students from scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, OBC and minorities. And this is the new admission policy students are agitating. All these universities have been established by law enacted by us, by this August House. So we have, we have a direct bearing in what is happening in these universities. In the name, in the name of Hindutva nationalism, they are decrying Indian nationalism and that is something we cannot allow. Okay. And, and here organizations are taking upon themselves the right to decide who is wrong and who is right and who One. violated the law. They cannot do that, sir. Okay. Members from the Treasury benches raised an objection saying their notice on this issue should also be allowed. The Deputy Chairman clarified saying they should submit a fresh notice. My point of order is, sir, Sir, there is a power to chairman uh. to suspend any rule and allow a member to speak under rule 266. Uh. Sir, they are giving Not a notice, they are giving a under notice 267. Uh. I am also giving a notice and Mr. Swapnadas Gupta and Vinay Sahasubuddha also giving Please, a notice. Please, others, others take your... If you allow their 267 All notice of them sit down. convert into a zero hour, uh. then allow our notice also in a zero oh, okay. hour. These members who have already spoken, they have given 267 notice which is to be taken at zero hour itself. 267 means suspension of the 
business of the day that has to be taken at your hour. Your hour. So chairman, chairman has full right, honorable chairman has full right to allow it in the form of 267. If 267 is allowed, then we will have to suspend the entire business of the day. So chairman, in view of the fact that we all want business to the house, chairman, in our interest, see, in the whole interest to the house, converted these 267 notices into zero hour notices. And so, accordingly, I call the names. Your notice, yes, correct. Your notice is call attention notice. If you want, call it, instead of call attention notice, it, only zero hour notice, okay, you can approach the Honorable Chairman, he will have no problem, he will, he will allow it. But, but call attention is a different thing, you should know that. Call attention means the minister, minister has to be prepared, Mr. minister has to be ready, and there should be a statement, and there is a procedure for that. So you are calling attention, Converting into zero hour is, is, I think it is something we cannot do. On its part, the government said it is willing to have a discussion on this issue. Vishal Daya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Lok Sabha passed the Admiralty Jurisdiction and Settlement of Maritime Claims 2016 Bill on Friday. The bill was introduced in the lower house in November last year. The bill seeks to consolidate the existing laws on civil matters of admiralty jurisdiction of courts, admiralty proceedings on maritime claims and the arrest of ships. Admiralty laws deals with, of course, the cases of accidents in navigable waters or involve contracts related to commerce on such waters. और उसमें जो दावे हैं, दावे विस्तार से और कोई भी उसमें छूट ना रह जाए, कुछ क्षति ना रह जाए, और जो पुराने कानून थे, वो कानून के तहत जो कार्यवाही नहीं हो सकती थी, और उसमें जो कंफ्यूजन होता था, वो कंफ्यूजन भी ना रहे। The Lok Sabha also today witnessed a verbal clash between the centre and opposition over the rise of LPG prices. The opposition also staged a walkout from the House on the issue. The center, however, termed the increase in LPG prices as a small hike. Opposition parties lashed out at the government, accusing it of burdening the poor by raising the prices of fuel products. Congress leader Malika Arjun Kharge termed the latest hike of 86 rupees on non-subsidized cylinders as the highest ever. डीजल में बढ़ोतरी करती है तो आप देखिए कि ये गवर्नमेंट गरीबों के ऊपर कितना बोझा डाल रही है विदिन टू इयर्स 271 रुपीस सर 271 रुपीस पर सिलेंडर इंक्रीज मींस इट हैज नेवर बीन हेल्ड ऑफ सो माय सबमिशन इज वी वांट एव वी वांट एव स्पेसिफिक आंसर फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट रिस्पोंडिंग टू द इश्� Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar termed the increase a small hike. He clarified that poor people will remain unaffected since only 1.1 crore people out of the total 91.7 crore people, LPG connection owners will pay the increased price. He also accused Kharge of misleading the house. There has been an increase of nearly $90 and to offset that increase, there has been a marginal increase, sir. Continuous increasing of the LPG cylinders by two rupees. Somebody has started it. The entire should credit go to Dr. Mallikarjun Karge, Sri Mallikarjun Karge, and Dr. Manmohan Singh sir. They have started it, and they have sweetly forgotten it, happily forgotten it, and misleading the house sir. Members of the Congress and the Trinamool Congress later staged a walkout protesting against the government's stand. Pranav Goswami's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Now, in an unprecedented move, the Supreme Court today issued a bailable warrant against sitting judge of Calcutta High Court, Justice C.S. Karnan, in a contempt case. The warrant was issued after Justice Karnan refused to abide by the Apex Court's order to be personally present before it in a contempt proceeding against him. A seven-judge bench headed by Chief Justice J.S. Kehar said that the bench was left with no option but to issue the warrant to ensure Justice Karnan's presence in court. The bench also directed the West Bengal Director General of Police to personally execute the arrest warrant 
to ensure the judge's presence on the 31st of March. Justice Karnan is facing contempt charges for making allegations against retiring, uh, retired and sitting judges of the Supreme Court and the Madras High Court. Justice Karnan claimed that he was being unfairly targeted. Wantonly, deliberately issued the order against me in order to ruin my life, career. In this way, already I made a, I already I made a several allegations against Justice R. Kagarwal, Justice M. O. Iqbal, Justice Ibrahim Khalifla, Justice Mani Kumar, Justice uh, Tanabalan, on various grounds, corruption, rape, and uh, forgery, etc. Now, the counting of votes in Uttar Pradesh will be taken up on Saturday along with four other states. Preparations for counting have been completed at the 75 centers across Uttar Pradesh. Priti Mishra now brings us this report on those preparations. The stage is set in Uttar Pradesh for counting of votes on March 11th with the administration laying out a foolproof security plan to ensure that counting passes off peacefully. The Election Commission has instructed electoral officers to set up additional CCTV cameras to monitor carrying of EVMs from strong rooms to the counting hall. A three-tier cordoning system will be set up in all counting centres to prevent the entry of any unauthorised persons. About, uh... 187 companies of Central Armed Police have been deployed in the entire state for peaceful counting. We have to restrict the entries in the counting centers, at the gates, outside the gates, the proper public order has to be maintained. And once the counting is over, we are not allowing any procession Buoyed by the exit polls and in anticipation of victory, the BJP has already placed an order for sweets. On the other side, the Samajwadi party has denounced the exit polls and are also preparing to celebrate. They put it as a swast. The same way, just as a Sola Mai Sola Mai Dojar Sata Chaga Parana Maya Theotra Pradesh, Bajapaki Pakshame, and put it as a swast. The Kigara Mars Dojar Satra Kubi, Uskahi Dora Hunevala, Bajapai Teen Sose Jada with Haiku Kisi to the Pradesh Majit Kerke, a Kistai Pur Bahamaki Sakarbanan Jari. Unone Dili Kichunome be Ladu Gardar Kiete, Ladu Batete, Bihar Kichunome to Kabiliete. मुझे उम्मीद है कि कल भी खा लेंगे सुबह 10 बजे तक का मौका है उनके पास क्योंकि जो एग्जिट पोल आए हैं जिस तरीके से ऑर्डर कर रहे हैं पटाके भी बिहार में उन्होंने फोड़े थे कल भी फोड़ लें लेकिन अंत में जब 11 बजे के बाद जो असली रुझान शुरू होगा मुझे उम्मीद है कि समाजवादी पार्टी और गठबंधन पूर्ण बहुमत सरकार बनाएगी the scramble in Uttar Pradesh is for 403 seats. The grueling two-month-long election process ended on March 8th. Exit polls may have emboldened the BJP, but will Uttar Pradesh see a clear winner? Or is it heading towards a hung assembly? Who will get to reign this splendid building of Uttar Pradesh Vidhan Sabha? Well, we shall get to know all that very soon. Reporting from Lucknow, with counterperson Arvind, I'm Kriti Mishra for Adi Sabha Television. Well, all our reporters are, of course, uh, panned out across five states, getting us updates, of course. And our correspondent, Ravindra Sharan, too, taking stock now of preparations in Goa ahead of counting on Saturday. We are standing right now in front of the counting center where the count is counting for the uh, assembly election is going to happen. All the necessary arrangement has been done by the election commission. Uh, security has been very uh, much tightened up here. Three-tier security arrangements have been, which includes the local police, the home guards, and the central armed police forces also. The strong, ro the strong rooms of this area has been taken care of by the uh, CAPF. Uh, and no uh, uh, unauthorized person is allowed to enter beyond this point, including uh, all the officers and uh, the candidates who are going to see their uh, countings will not be allowed to carry mobile phones as well. The special security arrangements has been done. Uh, frisking will be uh, done by the uh, police here. Special arrangements has been done by election commission to provide information in the real time to the candidates and uh, the sitting outside, the curious people who are sitting outside and watching the election results very uh, uh, cautiously. Also, uh, the, the data of the last years will also be given by the election commission. This is the first time that they are going to do in this election. The main issues which are faced in this election were uh, the Mopai airport issue, the special category status issue, the uh, dual citizenship issue, the language issue, these, and the casino and the culture. These are some of the important issues which the people of Goa are strictly thinking that whoever comes to the power but 
should be in this position to deal with these issues and there should be a permanent solution for the all problems and the all issues which the people of this uh, tiny state are facing for last many years. In Panjim with cameraman Manish Bhalla, Ravin Singh Shoran for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, I will take a quick break here, but don't forget uh, tomorrow, 7 a.m. onwards, uh, our live coverage of the counting will take place. Do join us then. We'll be back soon with the news tonight in a bit. Stay with us. Five keenly fought battles. Five eagerly awaited results. All the incisive analysis on the spot reports. Non-stop coverage of the election tally. Watch it live on counting day, Saturday, 11th March, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Let's get you some more national news now. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in fact, today welcomed the passage of the maternity bill, calling it a landmark moment. Sending his good wishes on Twitter, Modi said that the bill will better, uh, will increase health and uh, well-being of the mother and the child. Under the new maternity benefit amendment bill, the paid maternity leave in the organized sector has been increased to 26 weeks, which will benefit about 1.8 million women. The new law will apply to all establishments employing 10 or more people and the entitlement will be up only for the first two children. The bill also requires every establishment with 50 or more employees to provide creche facilities within a prescribed distance. The bill was passed by Lok Sabha yesterday and nine months after the Rajya Sabha had approved it. And here are more national news updates in Nationwide. Protests by fishermen in Tamil Nadu entered the third day on Friday against the killing of one of their colleagues, allegedly by the Sri Lankan Navy. Their demand is for a visit by a representative of the centre and an assurance that the fishermen will not be attacked by the Sri Lankan naval personnel while fishing in Pok Straits. The Supreme Court on Friday dismissed a PIL regarding an SIT probe into the media's role in the Augusta West End VVIP chopper scam case. Calling it an attack on the media's independence, the court said that investigative agencies are free to carry out a probe if they come across evidence of the involvement of certain individuals. V. M. Sridharan has announced his decision to step down from the post of Kerala Congress chief, citing ill health. The 69-year-old leader said that he was sending his resignation letter to Congress President Sonia Gandhi today itself. Sridharan is known for Sudhiran, I'm sorry, is known for taking a firm stand on several issues, which led to differences between him and the senior party colleagues. Students appearing for the class 10th board exams from next year will have to study six subjects instead of five with the CBSE remodeling its assessment scheme. Students currently have a choice of studying a vocational subject as an additional course. However, from the 2017-18 academic year, it will be compulsory to study a vocational subject. The CBSE has remodeled its assessment scheme under the National Skills Qualifications Framework. International news now and South Korean President Park Yun-hai was impeached on Friday with the Constitutional Court upholding a parliamentary vote to eject her from office for her role in a corruption and influence peddling scandal. The decision triggered violent protests in which two people were killed. South Korea now has 60 days to elect a new leader. South Korea's President Park Geun-hye became the country's first democratically elected leader to be forced out from office. The country's top court on Friday upheld Park's impeachment and issued a verdict to remove her from office over a corruption scandal involving her close friend. 65-year-old Park was impeached in a parliamentary vote last December. 
피청구인을 파면함으로써 얻는 헌법 수호의 이익이 압도적으로 크다고 할 것입니다. 이에 재판관 전원의 일치된 의견으로 주문을 선고합니다. 주문 피청구인 대통령 박근혜를 파면한다. The ruling sparked angry protests from hundreds of her supporters as they clashed with the police outside the court. Two protesters were killed and several others were injured. This h o n j e 의 판결을 우리 국민들은 받아들일 수 없습니다. 우리 국민들은 자유민주 대한민국을 위해서 끝까지 저항해 나갈 것입니다. Soon after the ruling, Acting President and Prime Minister Wang k y o y a n convened a cabinet and National Security Council meet. He called for calm in the country, saying the government should remain stable to prevent internal conflict from spreading. 더 이상 장외 집회를 통해 갈등과 대립을 확대하는 이런 일은 바람직하지 않습니다. Park is alleged to have been personally involved in using her presidential connections to pressure companies into giving millions of dollars in donations to non-profit foundations that she controlled. She now no longer has immunity as president and could face criminal charges over bribery, extortion and abuse of power. Prime Minister Huang will remain acting president until the presidential election which will be held within 60 days. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. And now to Pakistan, where the parliament has finally passed the much-awaited landmark bill to regulate marriages for minority Hindus in the country. The Hindu Marriage Bill 2017 was unanimous, unanimously adopted by Pakistan's National Assembly. The law was passed after a lengthy process of enactment. It was the second time that the National Assembly had passed the bill. It passed the bill in September last year, but had to pass it again as its version of the bill was changed by the Senate when it was adopted in February. The final text approved by both houses includes the Shadi Parat, a document similar to the Nikah Nama in Muslims. The document will be required to be signed by a pundit and will be registered with the re relevant government department. The Hindu marriage bill will help Hindu women get documentary proof of their marriage. And here are more international news updates in Global Buzz. The United States is turning up the heat on Pakistan. A strongly worded bill was introduced in the U.S. Congress by Congressman Ted Poe to declare untrustworthy ally Pakistan a state sponsor of terrorism. Introducing the bill, Poe said that it's time we stop paying Pakistan for its betrayal and designate it for what it is, a state sponsor of terrorism. The bill requires the U.S. President to issue a report within 90 days answering whether Pakistan has provided support for international terrorism. At least two persons were killed and one badly injured after a shooting at a Swiss cafe in Basel in Switzerland. The shootout took place at 8.15 p.m. local time on Thursday. According to reports, two men entered Cafe 56 and fired several shots. Authorities said that the assailants fled the scene However, a search operation to locate them was launched soon after. The reason behind the attack is not known yet. Seven people have been injured in an axe attack at Dusseldorf Central train station in Germany. One of those attacked is seriously injured. The suspected assailant has been taken into custody. The attacker was also badly injured after jumping from a bridge while trying to escape. Police say the 36-year-old suspect of former Yugoslavia suffers from psychological problems. The death toll in the Nepal bus accident has risen to 25 with dozens injured. The mishap took place when an overcrowded bus veered off a hilly road in West Nepal. The bus fell 200 meters into a river in Jajar Kot, which is 250 kilometers west of Kathmandu. The injured were evacuated to a local hospital. Local villagers helped the police and soldiers pull the bodies and the injured from the wreckage. And finally, let's give you all the updates from the world of sports in Sports Beat. The BCCI has withdrawn its complaint against Australian captain Steve Smith and Peter Hanscombe on the DRS controversy in the Bengaluru test. 
BCCI had lodged an official complaint trying to press level 2 charges against both players for violating the spirit of the game. However, after a meeting between the chief executives of both the boards, it was agreed to return the focus on the next match in Ranchi. The controversy had erupted after Smith was seen seeking the Australian dressing room's advice after being adjudged leg before wicket. Australian fast bowler Mitchell Stark has been ruled out with the final two tests against India after suffering a stress fracture to his right foot. Stark played a key role both with the bat and the ball in the opening two tests, picking up five wickets besides scoring a crucial half-century in Pune. Stark joins all-rounder Mitchell Marsh, who was earlier ruled out of the series with a shoulder problem. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Vitaly Matko has been barred from standing for re-election for a place on the FIFA Council. Mutko, who is also the head of the Russian Football Union, had failed an eligibility test carried out by the FIFA Review Committee. He was among five candidates for four European places on the Council, which makes the key strategic decisions for the global soccer body. And that's it on the news tonight from the entire team here. Good night. Thank you.